Hey everyone, it's been over a month since I've posted a new workout, but that's because I've traveled again halfway across the world um, and myself and my children have had a really hard time adjusting to the time change. But we're back into routine again. So if anyone's in the same situation as us and is traveling this summer, this is a great workout for you because it's going to ease you back into fitness. It's primarily going to focus on the core um, as well as the lower back, that's part of the core. And I try all my workouts, I try and test them. Um, and let me tell you, for two days after the workout, I was really sore in my um, love handle area and the lower back. Uh, so it really is effective. If you're new to these workouts and you're a beginner, I always show variations to make it just a little bit easier so that everyone can do them. And I'm also going to offer some tips to make sure you're doing the exercises with proper form. The workout consists of four exercises. Each exercise is going to take about four minutes to do. So I monitor that with my interval timer. It makes it easier to track so I don't have to constantly stare at a watch. And they're very functional. So we work different levels, twists and turns. You are going to feel like you're getting a full body workout as well, but it really does focus primarily in, in the core area. Okay, so let's not waste any more time and let's get this workout started. in this workout. If you do want to use some weight, I here was using the uh, medicine ball. This only weighs 10 pounds. If you don't have a medicine ball and you have dumbbells, you can also use that, gripping it with the fingers, interlocking the fingers and keeping the arms straight. You can also use that. Or like I said, just use your own body weight. Okay, you're doing enough of the repetitions to really uh, feel the muscles work. If you need that little extra resistance, then you're free to choose either even a water bottle if you don't have weights, just to add that extra resistance. So, just some tips when you're doing the wood chop. If you can't go all the way down, then just simply twist the body enough so that the hands reach the knees, not, the, not to the floor. You notice my feet, they kind of move along with me. This is to protect my knees, because if you keep your knees forward and you're turning the body side, you're really going to be putting a lot of pressure on the knees. So twist the body by lifting the back heel off the floor, bringing your hands, bending the body straight down, not from the hips, but using the legs, okay? So using the legs, keeping the body tall, keeping the arms straight in line, don't bend the elbows, bring the arms across the body diagonally, all the way up, and notice again, my back foot is turning. The heel comes up and my body's completely in line all the way up. Arms are straight. So you're really going to feel this exercise in the obliques as well as the arms. So it's a great workout. Gets the heart rate up as well because you're using the full body to do this exercise. The easier way to do the burpee push-up to jump half turn would be to omit any of the jumps if you can't do those yet and to do the push-ups either from the knees in the box position. This is what it looks like. Go straight up, working the calves down. Place the hands on the floor. You would walk the feet out, one, two. And then if you can't do the push-up from this position, if it's too difficult, you would get down onto the knees into a box position. 
The hands should be slightly wider than shoulder, shoulder width apart at chest level. And then you would simply bring your nose down to the floor, keeping your stomach sucked in. So tuck your belly button in as if you're pressing it up towards your spine. Go down, push up this way. Then you would simply step back out again, walk the feet back in, stand up, and then you would do a jump half turn. Really works your balance, okay? And it's fun. It's like being a kid again. And you do the same thing on this side. So this is what it looked like without me stopping and interrupting every two seconds. Like that. Easier way to do the seated knee tucks would be to do them assisted with the hands. So this is one variation. You'll place the hands forward this way and you'll assist your body up and down using the hands, supporting yourself on your hands. So it would look like this, bringing the knees into the chest and back out. That way. If this is still too difficult, then you can grab your legs behind, behind your thighs and you pull yourself in using your body, same way. Up this way. And if that is still too difficult, you can't do it, then that's all right. Keep your feet stationary, grab behind your thighs, and just lower yourself and come back up. Eventually you'll build the strength so that you'll be able to lift your feet as well off of the floor and do it supported with the hands and then eventually without any hands. So you would just lower yourself. Very important when you do this, that you keep the chin off of the chest. So those who want to pretend like you have a tennis ball there, you can't, you can't touch your chin to your chest, okay? So keep that head up when you're going down. And imagine your spine is a pearl necklace. And as you're going down, each bead is touching the floor. So imagine that your spine, like the bead necklace going down, and one at a time coming back up. So you want to keep it nice and round as you go down, not flat, okay? So go down, pull, back up. The beginner variation to do the side plank raises would be to do them with the knees bent. So instead of getting into this position here where the body is completely in line, elbows underneath the shoulder, hand can either be here on the hips or behind the head, simply bend from the knees down, back. Okay, so this is still in front. You want to be careful when you bend the knees to not bring the knees to the front this way. So you want to make sure that the knees, the thighs, the stomach and the chest are completely in one line as if you're facing against the wall. Okay. Again, hands should stay flat. Try to avoid clenching, okay? You want to make sure you allow circulation into the fingers. Keep the elbow underneath the shoulder. There's going to be times where you get tired and you're going to end up with the elbow past the shoulder. Just readjust and bring the elbow underneath the shoulder this way. Squeeze the core, squeeze the glutes, and you're going to raise the hip straight up to the ceiling. This way and down. Once your interval is done, you switch sides and you do the same thing on the other side.